In this short video, I want to talk about the configuration management in Palo Altos. Specifically, how do we manage our configurations? How do we go from one version of a configuration to another? And if necessary, how do we go back? Well, that's what this video is for. Very first question is, how would we be able to save and or load up a configuration? Let's say this is my environment right here. This is a fairly brand new configuration. Basically, I've just configured the IP addresses. Uh, if we look through here under the network device, uh, you will see that my interfaces are configured, my zones are configured, and my virtual router is configured. So let's say that this is a configuration that I'm starting with and I want to be able to make a change. How do I save this configuration so that if something breaks when I make a change, I can come back to it? Well, it's actually pretty simple once you know exactly where to look. What we do is we come over here to the device tab. On the device tab under setup, we have the operations sub tab. And here we see our config management options. Config management options, uh, revert, save, load, export, and import. What we want to do right here is we want to do a save and specifically we want to save a named configuration snapshot. Now the named configuration snapshot literally means we can name these snapshots. We can name these configurations for quick and easy review at a later date. So let's go ahead and try that. So we'll go ahead and create a named snapshot. I'm going to call this uh, after initial config. Hopefully it allows spaces. I'll say okay, invalid. Don't think it likes spaces. After initial config, Let's see if it will allow me to use camel case. All right, it took it. Uh, what I mean by camel case, uh, you'll notice that the A is capitalized, and then the I is capitalized, and then the C is capitalized. Uh, basically, that allows me to quickly see this is the beginning of a new word. All right, so it saved it. If I now want to go come back in and reload it, say I make some changes and I completely mess things up. Well, it's a good thing I saved it before I made some changes. I can load it. Load named configuration snapshot. So I load it. I look here at the name and I can look. Ah, uh, hey, look right there. There's my after initial config snapshot that I just created. There is the currently running config, which I just broke. So I don't want that one. After config, I say OK. So the config is being loaded. And then once it's done, I believe I hit commit and it will show ending pending changes. Now in this case, there's nothing here because I just saved this configuration and then I just loaded it. There's no configuration changes, nothing to worry about. But that would be a great way to be able to both save and load our configuration changes. Uh, let's say it's, it's Friday, Friday night at like 10 p.m. You finally get the work window or operations window in order to make a change to your firewall. You come in here, you save a prior to change snapshot. You make your change. You then save a post config snapshot. That way you have the what was working and what I did snapshots to be able to revert back to. Ultimately, you probably should give this something of a more specific name. Uh, for instance, today is, let's see, uh, October 16th, 2019. So I might say this like 2019, 10, 16, in order to give me both the year, month, and the day. And then initial config. And that gives me both a year, uh, a, a easily sortable year, month, day timestamp along with a title. So that if I have to run back, oh no, which one do I want to go to? Well, I want that specific date. Quick and easy. Uh, I can then have dozens or hundreds of configurations in there and quickly and easily find the one that I'm looking for. <clears throat> So that's how you save and you load your configurations. Next is changes. Well, we'll see if this works. Um, I'm gonna make a change 
come in here to the network environment and my interfaces. I would previously created this sub interface and I don't want it anymore. Uh, so I'm going to highlight it and then come down here to the bottom and click delete. Gives me all kinds of warnings. Am I sure I want to do this? Absolutely. I'm sure I want to do that. Uh, in fact, I'm so sure I want to do that. I'm then going to say commit. Now I want to see exactly what kind of changes there are uh, unavailable when a full commit is required. So I'm going to see what the changes are. I'm going to click preview changes and hopefully this will show me all of the changes that are necessary. Uh, you may notice I changed over to using Google Chrome instead of, uh, instead of Internet Explorer, which was in there by default. It just seems to work a little bit better for me. All right, we have way more than just a couple of changes. Hold on. I'm going to go back. I'm going to load up that configuration I just did. And then I'm going to commit it in order to get a fully committed change. Okay, so I close that. Now when I go back to my network configuration, you'll see that my uh, configuration is back there. My, my network interface that I previously deleted, previously deleted is back. Uh, that's because I just reloaded the configuration. So now let's delete that. Now let's say commit. And there we go, that's looking better. It's saying, hey, there's some policy and objects and some device configurations. Let's go ahead and preview those changes. It tells me how many lines do I want to see at one time. Uh, a 10 is fine. That, that'll work. There we go. Uh, up here I have a legend. Green means added. Uh, so lines being added to my environment are in green. Orange are modified. Anything being modified will be in orange. And then red is deleted. Anything red will be deleted. What that means, right here we can see we have a units. This was the current running configuration. It listed units. Over here, units has been modified from having some units. Ooh, however you do those curly braces. There we go, from having some curly braces under it to just simply ending. That's considered a modify. I would call it a delete, but it considers that a modify. So we can actually see, yes, here was a configuration for Ethernet 1 dot, Ethernet 1 slash 1 dot 42, and it's currently changed to, well, pretty much nothing. And so we can look through here and we can see all of the configuration changes. Uh, Ethernet 1 1 dot 42 goes away. And it looks like in this case, it's all modifies, but you can very quickly and easily see all of the updates and deletes or adds and deletes that would be necessary for the environment. So I'm going to close this window since this is just the device configuration window or changes window and then click commit and that will actually commit my change. By the time I'm done with that, I should be able to then go save the configuration. So that's how we view the configurations. The very last option is back again under device setup operations. We can export and import the configurations. So let me go ahead and save this. I'll call this uh, 2019 10 16 after, after interface delete. Hopefully there's no maximum. Ooh, it's red. I think that means that I'm I'm at a maximum number of characters. Can they do a Dell after interface Dell? Nope. After change, there. There we go. 
So after change took. So now I can export these. I can click on export named configuration. I choose which named configuration I want. Uh, let's see, I want the after change. So okay. And that downloads a file onto my computer. If I look into the downloads folder, right there, we go ahead and open this up in Notepad. A uh, little tip and trick if you've never seen this before. I've taken a file, I've opened Notepad. I'm going to simply click and drag that file into Notepad. It opens it right up. And ooh, it's an XML file. So there is better editors in order to see XML files, but the entire configuration is here on the XML file. Uh, for instance, this guy's one of this guy's IP addresses is going to be uh, 10. Dot one dot one dot one. So I will go ahead and find that. And right there, that is in one of the in the entry for the Palo Alto DMZ IP address. So at this point, I now have the configuration in a text file. Uh, if I actually had an XML editor on this computer, I could actually edit it and view it in a better view, better format. I can then save this configuration off-site. Uh, I could store online on a cloud service or some other versioning environment and I could then have multiple copies of it not just on my Palo Alto but external to my Palo Alto and I can even share these configurations amongst multiple Palo Alto devices. Imagine that. So that's pretty much it. At this point, uh, we have gone ahead and we have saved our configurations. We've loaded our configurations. We've reviewed configuration changes. We have exported the configurations. And then of course it should be fairly simple to understand. We can also import those configurations back when we're done.